Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you all along to this service of thanksgiving for the life of Mr. Robert Russell, who's known affectionately by many simply as Bertie. I want to thank you this morning for, for coming along and for, for showing your care and concern for Bertie's family at this very difficult time. I'm really sorry I never had the opportunity to meet Bertie, but he, he sounds like an incredible guy. And I'm, I really appreciate the help of his niece, Rosemary, and, and sharing stories and helping me get a picture today of just who Bertie was, what kind of character he was. So thank you to Rosemary. We're going to be doing two very straightforward things during our service this morning. First of all, we're going to be remembering Bertie's life and giving thanks to God. But secondly, we're also going to be choosing to worship the living God who holds all our lives in his hands. I want to welcome you into God's presence with these words of blessing from Scripture, from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we'll be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. The scriptures tell us that blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So let's turn to God in prayer. Let's turn to the source of all comfort and find comfort in his presence. Let's pray together. Living God, in the midst of sadness and grief, we turn to you this morning, and we turn to you longing for your comfort, for your love to wrap around us and encourage us in the midst of difficulty and pain. We choose, even in a time of grief, to, to, to turn our hearts towards you and to worship you as the creator and ruler of all things. We recognize, Lord, that you are our Heavenly Father. You're the, the, the loving Father that cares for each one of his children. The loving Father who will never abandon us. And we want to turn to you now, acknowledging our own failures and mistakes. Owning up to all the missed opportunities we have had to do good, to bring help. We confess our frequent lack of faith. Our continual disobedience. And we ask that in this time of grief that you would forgive us for our apathy. That you would give us faith to trust you with our lives. That you would assure us of your pardon. That you would remind us that your grace is enough for all our needs. That you would remind us, Father, that only you give us that, that peace that is beyond understanding. So, Lord, we, we, we long for that sense of peace today in the midst of grief. And we ask that you would lead us into your peace. Assure us today, Lord, of your amazing love. And remind us of the reality that nothing can ever separate us from your love. We thank you, Lord, that even though we live in a world that is just so full of change and uncertainty, your, you never change and your love never changes. Your love is constant. Your love is unchanging. And we thank you that you love every single one of us in this room today. And every single one of us watching online on the live stream. So we thank you for your love for each one of us. And we pray, Lord, that as we remember Bertie's life, Lord, that we would open our hearts to hear what you might be saying into our lives. We want to thank you, Abba Father, that, that you have loved Bertie for every single moment of his life. Even before he was formed in his mother's womb, you knew of Bertie and you loved him. So we thank you, Father, for your love. And we ask that you would give us strength today. Give strength to Bertie's family. We ask, Lord, that you would plant your hope in our hearts. Strengthen us with your presence. Calm us with your love. And we ask, Lord, that you would speak into our lives through your living word. 
he would lift us out of the darkness of despair and into the light and the peace of your presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn, which is Abide With Me. Let's, let's stand together. take your seats one of the ways we can find comfort at difficult days like today is by turning to the word of God and when we turn to God's word we discover that God has plans and purposes for our lives that that don't end in a funeral service we discover that God has eternal life plan for those that, that that respond to his call of love so hear these words from John's gospel in the New Testament. John 14, verse 1. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. 
I'm sure as you've gathered in this morning to remember Bertie's life and even just looking at the lovely photo on the order of service, I'm sure your hearts have been moved as you have remembered Bertie and, and, and as those memories have have flooded back and even just being back in a church in the midst of this pandemic and hearing hearing the piano I'm sure there's been a whole mixture of emotions going on in the room sadness grief the sense of loss the warm memories of a dear loved one the relief that Bertie won't face any any more suffering in his life so with all these emotions swirling around us this morning that's Let's choose to celebrate Bertie's life as we walk through some verses of scripture. Let's open our hearts and minds and let God speak into our lives afresh, bringing new life and comfort and challenging us afresh. Bertie was born into the Russell family on the 17th of July, 1928, the son of Johnny and Mary Russell. He grew up here in Ards, surrounded by his family. Growing up alongside him in the family home was his big sister, Martha. And Martha is with us this morning. And let me encourage you to pray for Martha in the days ahead as she grieves for her wee brother, Bertie. Bertie went to school here in Ards. And when it was time to put his days behind him, he entered the world of work as he served an apprenticeship as a motor vehicle mechanic. He, uh, he, he began working at McMoran's Garage on Francis Street, which I'm told is, is just where, where Quick, round right about where Quick Fit is these days. And after years working in McMoran's, Bertie would, would move down to a friend's garage out in Lockery's, where he would spend the rest of his working life. Bertie loved his job as a motor mechanic. He was a dedicated worker, and I'm told that he was really well thought of by staff and customers alike. And even in his retirement, he couldn't keep away from tinkering with cars. And he loved to help out his friend Raymond in, in McCombs' garage. And I'm told that Bertie had a, had a sense of humor that occasionally bubbled to the surface when he was dealing with difficult customers in the garage. I'm told about one demanding customer who brought his car in and said, oh, I only need a wee job done and it's only gonna take you five minutes. And Bertie says, I'm sorry, but the, the guy who does all the five minute jobs isn't in today. So that gives us a sense of, of Bertie's sense of humor. But as we think about Bertie, we invariably have to think about Susan, the, the love of his life. When Bertie was a young man, he met Susan right here in Ards, and it was a relationship that would change the trajectory of his life. Susan was from Port of Ferry, and she'd moved up to Ards as a young man to take up a job in Depreda's clothing factory. Bertie and Susan became an item, and before long, they had decided that this was forever. And in March 1959, they tied the knot and became man and wife. Bertie and Susan both shared a Christian faith, and they were both members of the Presbyterian Church. But when they got together, they weren't members of the same Presbyterian Church. Susan had been attending Greenwell Street, and Bertie was a member of First Arge. But as a married couple, they moved into their first home together right beside us here on East Street. And it must have seemed like the obvious choice to start afresh in a new congregation as a married couple as they joined the congregation of Strain here. And I think it's fair to say that down through the years, Bertie has been very much a long-standing member of this congregation. And I know he will be sorely missed by his brothers and sisters, by his church family here at Strain. As the years went by, Bertie and Susan would move from East Street across to Greenwell Street, but there was no discussion of them ever leaving Strain. They were here to stay. And they would spend the rest of their married life together in that house on Greenwell Street. Rosemary was telling me how house proud Susan was. The house was always ship shape, always tidy and neat. And it sounds like she had Bertie really well trained. I'm told that it was even really, really neat and tidy when he was working in the garage. And if, if a colleague happened to accidentally spill oil on his clothes, Bertie was really annoyed uh, and couldn't keep working with the oily go home and get changed. He just, he had been trained to be neat and tidy. In March of this year, Bertie and Susan celebrated 62 years of married life. They've always been devoted to each other. They, they've 
they've lived for each other. And it sounds like they were an incredible double act. When it comes to exotic travel, I'm told that Bertie and Susan were very much a pair of homebirds. They might have traveled as far as Jersey or Donegal, but they were most at home and, and, and most encouraged by just spending time traveling around the Arge Peninsula, catching up with Susan's family. In recent years, Bertie and Susan have faced new challenges and difficulties of things have, have become increasingly difficult. Susan's dementia diagnosis made everyday life increasingly challenging. And alongside this, Bertie experienced the challenge of ill health himself as he battled with stomach cancer. Susan's mobility was on the decline over the last year or so, and after a bad fall at Christmas, she broke her wrist and had to be taken into the Ulster Hospital. It became clear that she could no longer re return home and she moved into Edgewater Care Home. This must have been an extraordinarily difficult season for Bertie to navigate. And as the, the weeks and months continued, sadly, Bertie's health was to take a dramatic turn as, as, as he was rushed into hospital himself and in, as the months went on, his health deteriorated sharply. He was, he was, as I was saying, battling with the stomach cancer. And although he was initially determined that to remain at home in Greenwell Street, eventually he agreed to join Susan in Edgewater Care Home. Bertie passed from this life on Friday evening, stepping in a moment out of the pain and suffering of this world and into the peace and presence of his Saviour. I want to spend a couple of minutes exploring a couple of key elements of Bertie's life. Key elements that we all share a, a, a need for. Two very straightforward elements, bread and water. Or we could talk about our, uh, how, how we are affected if, if, if we have a lack of bread and water. We would experience hunger and thirst if we don't have bread and water. When we think about bread, when we think about hunger, I'm sure throughout his life, Bertie knew how to satisfy his hunger. He, 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 he knew how to, to satisfy his something delicious. We all love our grub, don't we? But alongside satisfying our physical hunger, there's so many other things in life that we hunger for. We can hunger for all manner of things, contentment, personal gratification, respectability, power, fame, success in our career, climbing up the property ladder. We can be hungry for all kinds of things. Just think about the things that you're longing for in your life right now. Jesus in John's gospel talks about himself as the bread of life. And in contrast to so many other things that we hunger for in life, whether it's a delicious meal or whether it's any of these other things that we're yearning for. The reality is that these things only satisfy us temporarily. If you have a lovely dinner tonight, that is not the last meal that you will need. You will need to eat again. But Jesus is telling us that when we direct our attitudes towards God, we encounter something that sustains us forever. Listen to these words from John 6. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. So many of the things that we, we, we yearn for, that we, we choose to satisfy our hunger with, actually don't last. They're passing, they're temporary, they're transient. They only satisfy our appetite for a moment. We continue to hunger for more. But Jesus is saying, I will satisfy those deepest longings. I am the bread of life. And the same is true for our thirst. When we're out in a, on, on a hot day like that, we know what it's like to be gasping for a drink on a beautiful hot summer's day. We all need to satisfy our thirst. Bertie had to satisfy his thirst. Listen to these words from John's Gospel. 
Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give them will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Jesus is offering us the gift of living water, the ultimate refreshment. The big question is, are we ready to receive it? You know, we can find incredible hope in the good news of Jesus. In the good news that, that God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And it makes such a difference on days like today and days when we're immersed in grief and pain and, 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 and sadness. The love of Jesus means everything on a day like today. We can look to, to Jesus and see the extraordinary extent of God's love for each one of us. We discover that God loves us and longs to forgive us for all the mistakes in our lives, for all those times when we have stuffed up. When we look to the cross, we find that Jesus paid the price for all our mistakes. And through him, we can experience forgiveness and mercy. When we think about Bertie's life, we can think about how he was shaped by the loving embrace of of the family that he grew up with and by the love that he and Susan shared. And the reality is that God is inviting each one of us into the loving embrace of his family, calling each one of us to be his sons and his daughters, to enter into an eternal relationship with him through Jesus, his son. He longs to restore our relationship with him, to bring us to that place of peace and reconciliation big question is, are we open to that? Are we open to be restored to our relationship with God? So as we hunger and thirst for things in life, let's choose to satisfy our, our appetite, not just with things that are temporary, but with God's gift of eternal life. Because he longs to comfort us in our darkest moments. He longs to, 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 to give us the gift of eternal life, to pour out his blessing on us. So let's make a decision today as we remember Bertie's life. Let's quench our thirst with living water. Let's feed our hunger with the bread of life. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we want to thank you for your presence with us here this morning. Your word tells us that where two or three are gathered together, that you are there in the midst. So, so we welcome your presence amongst us. What a thank you for family and friendships, for how you have created us with the ability to give and receive love. And we want to thank you for the fact that you draw us, you invite us, you embrace us into your love, into your family as your sons and daughters. You draw us into a loving relationship. You draw us out of death and sadness and into joy and, and life everlasting. We especially thank you for your precious son, Jesus, and for the incredible blessings that we can encounter through him. We thank you for his birth. We thank you for his sinless life. And we thank you for his sacrificial death. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you laid down your life so that we could know your freedom. And we rejoice in the reality that you are alive, that you have risen from the grave. And we rejoice because this changes everything. Jesus Christ, you have defeated death. You have defeated death and darkness. And because you live, we can be sure that we also, through faith in you, will be raised to eternal life when you return. And we pray now for those that mourn. We pray for Bertie's family. May they know your blessing in the midst of their grief. And we pray particularly for his surviving sister, Martha. May she know the peace of your presence in her life as she grieves for her brother. We pray for Bertie's wife, Susan, and ask, Father, that you would flood her with a sense of, with a really vivid sense of your loving comfort. May she know your peace and blessing. And we pray for Bertie's family. 
for nieces and nephews. We pray that they would find comfort in your presence today and in the days ahead. Remind them of your love for them. Remind them of your, your promise of eternal life. We pray for the wider family circle, for friends, for neighbors, for everyone who will miss Bertie, for his church family here at Strain that will, 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 will miss the, the, the empty seat in the pew. And now, Father, we want to thank you for Bertie's life. We want to thank you for the happy memories that will stay with friends and family, times of laughter, times of joy, times of love. Father God, we thank you for Bertie. We thank you for all that he was. We thank you for all that he means to everyone gathered in here this morning. And as we celebrate Bertie's life, Lord, we thank you that you loved him with a never-ending compassion. We're blown away, Lord, when we consider how you love each one of us with that fierce intensity. So we cling to the hope that we find in the good news of Jesus. Hope for forgiveness. Hope for freedom. Hope for eternal life in your presence. Hope for refreshment and peace. And now, Father, we ask that you would make us open and obedient to your purposes in our lives. Give us the courage, Father, to accept your invitation of love. Help us to follow you to surrender our lives into your hands. This day, Father, as we remember Bertie's life, may we embrace your love in our hearts and may we be transformed. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand together to sing our closing hymn, Nearer My God to Thee. Let's stand.
now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us forevermore.